The if statement along with the if else statement and the if else if statement, uh, they're a great conditional statement to use and more often than not for the majority of times that you use conditional statements that is what you'll use. Sometimes though there's another type of conditional structure that's used quite often and it's called the switch statement. And to explain the switch statement let me just use an example. I've got a form here in front of me and I can see here it's just a drop down box and I've got a number of different days for the user to choose. Let's look at it in the actual browser. So I'm just going to save that, switch over to the browser and I can see here choose a day and what I want is I can click on any of those different days, submit and it goes to, to a results page. Let's take the results page and look at the code for that. So in the results page this is the code for it at the moment and I'm just taking in the day value from the post array and putting it into a PHP variable and then I'm just echoing out that variable just to show that stuff is coming through that those variables are coming through and that it's getting patched into the variable day. If I wanted the PHP script to go into different blocks of, of PHP code depending on what day it was I could easily do that using an if else if else if structure and let me show you something like that. let's look at this if else if structure that I have here so again I'm taking in that day value from the post array putting it into the day variable and then I go through a set of different if else if statements and I see what the day is and if the day is Monday for example I go into the Monday code if it's Tuesday I go into the Tuesday code and so on now I've got seven different choices there and as you can see, I've got seven different blocks of code that I can go into. At this stage, when I go to that number of different choices, sometimes the if, else if, else if uh, structure, it's a little bit cumbersome. And it also looks a little bit untidy in my code. And so in those kind of cases, once I go over maybe four or five different choices, it's time to start considering whether you should use this new type of structure, the switch statement instead. Let's take a look at what a switch statement looks like. In this situation, I'm just going to get rid of some of this code here. And let's start with the keyword switch. And we put in a round bracket. And here we evaluate the value usually of a variable. And so I'm going to put in the variable that I have, which is day. And then we have a curly brace. What happens in PHP once it comes to a switch statement is it evaluates the variable that's in the round braces and it jumps to a particular case uh, that, that states the value of that variable. So for instance, uh, the first case in this scenario would be Monday. So I'm going to use the next keyword or next reserved word that is in part of a switch statement. It's the case keyword and I'm going to put in the string Monday. I put in a colon there and then I put in the code that I want to execute in that case. Now it's very important once I put in all the different code and statements that I want to execute in that case I have to put in the break statement which is the third keyword or reserved word in the PHP switch statement. If I don't put in break what will happen is is the PHP will keep on executing the code until it does find a break statement. And similarly for all the other days of the week I'm going to continue on in the same vein as that first case for Monday. And so I'll just do that quickly. and so on for the rest of the days of the week. Once I've got to the final case and the final break statement, then I close off the curly brace at the other end of the switch statement. And let's save that code and let's see if it works in the browser. So, just refresh this and choose a day. And the program works correctly. We get the proper output because it went to the appropriate case. Let's look at the code again. One thing to point out here is the variable that I have used is of string type. So therefore, the different cases, I've identified them by using string literals here. We could just as easily put in variables that are strings, but essentially the type has to be the same. But just as easily, I could have used an integer 
uh, if the variable here in the switch statement was an integer. Or I could have used a float, or I could have even used a boolean. But using a boolean probably wouldn't make much sense because then you would have only two alternatives and then you wouldn't really be using a switch statement. But you could work it if you wanted. So the last question to answer is when should you definitively use a switch statement? And really, up until about four or five different conditions, I would usually use an if-else-if -if structure. Uh, after that, you have to start wondering if it's time to use a switch statement or not. Um, but definitely up to when you're using H, 9, 10 conditions or above, I would almost always use a switch statement for that scenario. And between 4 and 8 or 9 conditions, you really have to take it on a case-by-case -case basis, pardon the pun. Um, but it's interesting to note that there isn't really any performance enhancement by using the switch statement. It's just that it makes your code look tidier and it's easier to see what's going on at a glance. And that's a basic switch statement.